Alrighty, so I found this particular uh, visual novel because the creator did a Barra furry art gallery and got a f actual location and everything, which is wild. This game is an another game for 18 year olds and older, as is the usual. Let's see here. Or Himalayan Birkin, the VN, is not in any way officially associated with Hermes or any of its subsidiaries or affiliates. This game contains textual depictions of violence, gambling, addiction, drug use, mental illness, and the sex industry. This game depicts illegality such as sex industry, human trafficking, and murder. Player discretion is advised. You must not play this game if you're under age of 18. If you see any text in yellow colored italic font, it means the characters are talking in Korean. If it's plain white, the characters are speaking English or their mother tongue. Oh, and there we go. I think it's a, it's making the disclaimer they're not officially associated with those people because I think the uh, a decent number of the art that this person makes is characters doing desperate things for extremely expensive fashion items and I don't think it's because they actually want the items it's because it represents an un like an incomprehensible level of personal wealth compared to like what they're actually uh living with kind of like kaiji like situations that one anime about gambling not sleeping today yes what you looking we go talk somewhere else. I glance around. Our coworkers are sleeping. Suo seems to catch my point. I wake up from metal decking bed and we walk out quietly to not wake others up. We sit on the metal beam. I connect my harness to the safety cable. What a view. It is a nice view. 72 stories tall. The world. The place that's too high for a person like me. Suo's an iron worker and I've been his apprentice for a week now. He talks more about what not to do than what to do. Considering how dangerous this job is, that's fine. I'm just glad I was hired. Very quickly, too. Took me only five days to go employed from unemployed. This also pays well. My last job at Gunpowder Factory paid me $10 an hour. This pays me 17 What are you looking on your phone? I still can't believe LG Twins lost against Lot Giants. I never should have listened to that stupid son of a bitch. I lost $600 on that bet. I texted Jim about beating the shit out of Tai Hoon. Jim made the same mistake of taking advice from him. He got lucky that one day, and I believed he had something. Now I've lost 1200 Can't believe I'm still doing this. I should be more careful. I need to save money. President election is half a year away, and it's neck and neck. I'm still not sure if the immigrant-friendly one will win or not. What if I work my ass off to get the Korean citizenship and the anti-immigrant one wins? I'm risking nothing. I'm moving to Indonesia before the election. And I need to make a, as much money as I can before I leave. I'm not repeating this pathetic life. And I'm not telling him that. I searched the school you told me. Very good. Those lazy, lazy sloths don't even bother to look it up. You get that certificate, and I can get you some works that are actually profitable. What was that called? You know, arc welding. Get that first. The rest is all easy. That school costs like $300. It's about my monthly rent. I want him to keep... I want him to keep me by his side, but I'm not sure if I want to pay that much money just to impress him. I'll teach you everything when you're on the field, so hurry up and go get it. Okay. Got any plans this evening? What's the matter? A little welcoming for you, new teammate. 
Sua rubs my back. Instinctively, I flinch and back out. Shit. He's in shock. This broken body of mine won't obey my command. I shouldn't be doing this. Grilled pork. The entire team? It's on me. Co-workers. Except for a few, more like shitheads. Refugee fuckers look down on me, and they're no bet they're in no better situation than me. Korean bitches look down on me as if we're they're upper class or something. I'm not spending a minute more with them, especially not on dinner time. They got their mouth shut, but I know. The contempt in those eyes. Biting down on me when I'm not present. Sorry, I have other stuff. Oh, what's up? The... I can't explain in Korean, but I have work to do. That's unfortunate. I will make time next time. Good. He pulls his thumb up. I do the same. Why are you so stiff? Uh, loosen up. He pats my back. I flinch. I shouldn't. I must stay still. Just think of me as your dad. That is a big hand. Someone's married. He grabs my paw and holds it up. He puts it next to mine. I try not to shake my paw. I can smell the musky cigarette. Brown. You're red. Just like my son. Boy has got that red fur from my wife. I stare at the two paws. Mine is covered in a mix of beige and red fur. His is covered in, brain, in, in plain brown. His massive paw oversizes mine greatly. Makes me feel like a pup. We don't look like we don't look alike. You act like my son too. You follow my words very well. Thanks, sir. Callum. Yes. What brought you to Korea? You really don't talk much with those guys around. I already told everyone I immigrated because I like how guns are illegal in Korea. I don't know what more he wants. I like Korea. Suo grunts loudly. <laughs> yes, of course, you must love our nation. But I'm curious if that's all there is. You know, we're still recovering from the war. America would have been a better place to live. I like Korea and I wanted to help Korea. I don't think that's the answer he wanted. Yeah, well, everyone's got their own story. I'm so proud of you, anyhow. You're so young, and you're surviving in this complete foreign country. Thanks, sir. He tries to say something, but his phone buzzes. It's the alarm. Let's wake them up. We got work to do. We stand up to walk back. I wake Sang Hoon up. Wake up. Sang Hoon swing swings his arms at me. I just managed to avoid it. Ben is cool. He says he's from Canada, and I know he's lying. I know that scar on his face isn't from falling down the stairs. And whenever someone brings up how unbearable it is to get such injury by falling down the stairs, I feel my own body tensioning. And it's happening again now. You fall from the stairs? You okay with ladders? People laugh at that. Ben, too. Just laugh it away. Thankfully, nobody suspected him of lying until now. Don't you worry. I feel sorry for him, and I feel lucky I don't have any scar on my face. Sua waits for Ben. He climbs up the ladder and connects his harness to the safety cable. He sits on the framework right across me. Then Sua works the control sticks, lowering the beam down for us. We take the beam, fit it into place, I hammer in the bullpen, and put my hand in the bolt bag. Shit. 
You son of a... Sua's voice thunders. It hits me like a punch to the gut. My hand is in the air. The pouch is gone. It must be falling free towards the ground that's 200 meters away. Um... I look down. Sua runs to the end of the deck to check. There's a netting system just above the sidewalk, but I can't see where it landed. Pouch must be fine, but I'm afraid the bolts itself could easily fall through the nets. Sua seems to be in panic. He rushes the elevator. Fuck. I'm down and get it. Sang Hun barks sharply. This is one of the many things Suo has already warned me about. I should always be careful not to, bro to, not to drop things. It's not like I fear height, but now I can't bring myself to stand up. I instead pull myself towards the ladder, my butt firmly attached to the beam. What's he doing? At that, I slowly stand up, my legs trembling. I see the ground 200 meters away from me, cars and people looking like little ants crawling around. I walk towards the ladder, everyone gazing at me. Those eyes. They knew it. They knew all along that I would fuck up. Um... That sounds bad. I dive back into tr my trench instant. I, I dive back into trench instantly. Obviously, this is all translated and not entirely well localized. Scorching sun burning my face off, but I'm still shivering. Is this war? I thought the, I thought the, the the thing collapsed or something. Bloody hot sweat pours down, mixed with the dirt and dust. It streams down into my fresh wound. The pain. I'd rather rip my arm off. My left arm. That bomb must have pierced some debris in my arm. No. What if I rip my arm off? If I lost that arm, doesn't mean doesn't that mean that I'm out of this hellhole? I resent the metal pieces that's pierced into my arm. Why? Why are you so small? What if you were bigger? What if you cut off my entire arm? Suddenly something shakes my face. It's Arno. He's shouting, but I can't hear a thing. All I can hear is this eerie noise. He runs off into the right. I look left. A grenade. I slam my backpack and my body over it. Too late to run away. Gallum. Oh, did he did he black out? Had to have from like PTSD or something and fall? What's somewhat upsetting is that the most recent update from the developer is that they just got drafted. His face materializes. Suo. I try to stand, but something pins me down. Invisible feet stomp on my chest, pushing me down in this, in this faint world. In my mind, I'm on my feet, stumbling forward. I manage to mumble, what's going on? Or at least I think I do, but I don't. Suo finds my eyes are open and runs off. His figure fades away like smoke. Why is everything so hazy? I try to fight against the ghosts that's surrounding me, but I remain still like a beaten up dead rat. It's a very specific image. They're strapping me down. On my leg, on my arm, on my neck. I have to fight. I have to survive. My finger twitches. Please. Let go of me now. I'm a fucked up bundle of shit even without you bitches. <laughs> That's what life's just like on this bitch of an earth. I gasp for breath. I can feel the weight of all the fallen spirits bearing down on me. My finger moves with more purpose. It's as if the phantoms that possessed me finally figured this shithead not even worthy of their time. Movement begins to spread. I let out a sharp gasp. Suddenly, I'm pulled from the suffocating Im immobility. I spring up. I'm panting hard. It feels like I broke a curse. I, du I double check. My arms, my legs, everything's moving now. And I begin to realize I'm on a bed. 
I'm undressed. I instantly grab the bed sheet to cover myself up. There's a tube attached to my arm. I look around to see more people on bed. They're all hurt. Some of them wearing the same uniform of mine. And most of these uniforms are half stripped to reveal the wounds. And I finally hear my surroundings. Hollering and computer noises. This is an emergency room. Then a person, doctor or nurse, comes with Suo. Are you finally- are you fully awake now? I nod. She speaks things I can't comprehend at all. I can only blink. He's from the USA. He doesn't speak Korean well. You onto some medicine, right? No. And the doctor raises an eyebrow. I saw you have quite the scars. I had an accident from old job. I'm fine now. Well, the checkup result says you're fine, but do you remember how you got here? I don't. What's the last thing you remember before waking up here? I worked. He looks at Suo. He nods. He might have more symptoms, such as amnesia. Will you keep an eye on him for at least a day? Of course. Ask him a lot of questions. It'll help. She And she leaves. Why are we in an emergency room? You really don't remember, do you? No. The tower crane. Operator must have made a mistake. The thing collapsed. Tower crane collapsed? Yes. We had to evacuate. I hit the building next to the site and... It was a whole mess. But you know what's even weirder? What's weird? You. You jumped off, remember? No. You remember your home address? Yeah. Is there anything you don't remember? That's gonna be hard to recall on the fly. If I don't remember, then how... I know if I remember it or not. Huh. You smart thing. I thought your head was damaged. He roars with laughter at that, a big paw patting my back. He immediately retracts. Why are you shivering, you cold? What about Bolt Pouch? Oh, that thing. Fell in the net. No one got hurt. Be careful, you stupid bitch. <laughs> Even know how shocked I was? Be, it said, be careful. <laughs> The English is almost perfect most of the time with, like, Suo and the Doctor, so you can tell that they're intentionally the English being Korean, but it's English to us, but their yellow means they're speaking Korean. So you can tell that uh, Callum is intentionally speaking broken Korean, and, that, and that's why it reads as a mess to us. But it is also translated and not perfectly, so there are just tons of mistakes everywhere. It's just that you can tell Callum's extra all over the place, but that part's on purpose. Am I fine? Yeah, thank your harness for that. Is that all? Yeah. Or is that all? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We going to work tomorrow? The construction site is a mess. I'll be looking for somewhere else where needed. Take some break for now. I'll text you later. I'm still hired? Yes, of course. What are you talking about? Okay. He told me to come over to his home, as the doctor suggested, but I refused. He's seen everything. I know he's gonna... I know he's gonna ask about my scars now. I told him, I'm just as good and healthy as any other day. I don't need any monitoring. It's a golden hour, probably seven. Did I black out for that long? He offered me to drive me home. His car would be full of my co-workers, but today we're alone. A lot of people hurt. I was too busy dealing with you, kid. I'm sorry. It's fine. I'm still not sure how, uh, I'm still not sure how big the accident was, but our team was fine, except for you. 
Look, look it up on YouTube. It was briefly on the news while you're sleeping. So there should be more tomorrow. Thank you. What? You helped me. No, thank you for helping us rebuild this ruined land, Callum. Rest the drive was silent. But he opens his mouth once again when we arrive at the apartment complex. Before you go, I'm curious. Why did you jump? I don't know. His body slightly leaned towards me. Lips pursed. Hands gripping the wheels tight. His brown eyes shine yellow from the surrounding lights. I look straight into his eyes. Then his body goes limp. He looks away. We'll call you when I find some job to do. Return when you're feeling fine. Yes, sir. Thank you for the ride. Goodbye. I, I get out of the car, shut the door, Sua drives off. I walk into the complex. This is familiar. I know what's coming next. They first ask, why did you jump? One question, and then they're reminded that I'm full of mystery. Why are you so sensitive of someone hollering at you? Why are you scared of people touching you? Why are you scared of sirens? Does that sound like a bomb to you? Does it sound like a gun to you? Oh, and what's with the scars? Intentions behind these questions are crystal clear. Final conclusion? Leave this instant or we're reporting you to Interpol. After making sure I don't see Suo's car anymore, I exit the complex. Welfare housing is about 30 minutes walk from here. I see some Korean people taking night walks on the street. They're all well over 50. People of my age is hard to come by. People are wearing either Chanel, Prada, Gucci, or Louis Vuitton. They stare at me. This part of town is always like this. Hmm. So he lies about his address and gets dropped off somewhere else and then walks half an hour to where he actually stays. But my part of the town is no better. There's a horde of homeless people scattered about everywhere, consuming alcohol or worse. Most of them either lost an arm or leg or more. A lot of them are transient. Most go missing after a week. Either they're trying to escape the surveillance or they just got kidnapped. I'm lucky I'm intact. At least I have limbs I can work with. I finally arrive at the, at the welfare building. I get off the elevator, entering the corridor. These damn neighbors. This is what I get for living for 350 a month at welfare housing. Someone left a disposable delivery box in front of their door, still has leftovers in it. And someone else kicked it. The entire floor smells like spicy cheese. I'm careful not to step on the red liquid on the floor. If it was only food, I wish. I smell, this, I smell something sour too. Apparently some alcoholic lives on this floor. And the asshole throws up on the corridor at least once a week. It's been six months since I escaped that refugee shelter, and I almost miss it. People there were aware that they don't have any privacy. But these people think they have privacy, and they can't keep it to themselves. I open the window at the end of the corridor before entering my room. However, I doubt I can air out this mess. I close the door, but that nauseating smell is still somewhat present. I hope it's just my nose, not my room. I strip off. My jacket, shirt, pants. Metallic dust puffs up. So it told me it's bad for my lungs and I need to blow it away before leaving. I throw everything into the washing machine, which is located under the kitchen counter. I run the washing machine, but the tumbling noise isn't big enough to cover the surrounding sounds. The walls are practically a piece of paper. I don't have much to to look to know what my neighbors are doing. I don't have to look to know what my neighbors are doing. Room to my left, 1010. As always, he's watching a TV. I hear a bunch of laughter and some commentary on the situation. Some dude got his face thrown into a raspberry pie. That Gramps isn't the annoying one, however. At least he sleeps before 10. Round to my right, 1012. I hear it. Mating. It's different, too, every time. 
I'm still not sure if that's a girl or a dude living there. I hear at least seven different male and female moans every day and night. I know for sure there's a brothel business going on. Or they're horny enough to have an orgy every day from 1 to 5 a.m. 1 p.m. to 5 a.m. My phone buzzes. It seems I set a reminder at 8. Shit. That's right. I have that, rope, that opening rush errand thingy. Channel bags become so slow on... Had, had become so low on since Euro European war. So waiting overnight is the only way to even see them in the flesh. Thus, the rise of standing in line jobs. A waiting line usually forms right after the mall closes at 9. My job is to stand in line as a substitute for someone who's got enough money to pay me $250 for standing in line overnight. Oh, uh, that's what he means. Got it. And w with what I am now, I don't really want to sleep on the asphalt. I text my client. I am deeply sorry. I can't stand in line due to health issues. I'll give you a refund immediately. Reply is almost immediate. You confirmed to you this two days ago. You must have told me earlier. You can't do this to me now. The department store closes an hour. Our 100th day anniversary is only two days away. You even know how hard it fucking was to find the exact handbag my girlfriend wanted? Channel boy bag. White caviar leather. Silver hardware. There's only one of that in Korea. That very last handbag is now on the Avenue Jas Jamsil. You know how many days I spent restlessly trying to find where that little thing is? Don't you fucking dare ruin our 100th day anniversary. Don't you know how hard I worked, but I won't stand in line, personally? That's, that's too far, apparently. I don't care. You or some other random person, someone was being standing in line. Don't you ignore my messenger, I'll call you until you pick the fuck up. I'm not joking. <laughs> Jesus Christ, they really went. Yeah. I gotta go bank money. Pills, that's right. I already skipped two doses. I shouldn't have. I should feel better if I take those. Shit. One for lunch is in my pants. Pretty sure it'll taste like soap at this point. I go to the bathroom. I slide open the mirror and reach into the cabinet. My phone vibrates in my pockets. Must be a call from that guy. I pull out a packet marked after dinner. There's seven pills in it. Shaky hands. Focus. Careful not to drop them. They cost a lot. Get some tap water from the sink. Raise my hand. Raise my head. My phone keeps buzzing. And I'm com comforted with something horrible. I see a monster. I hear slurpy noises and creaking mattresses. My phone keeps buzzing. Shaggy, mangled mane. Red fur matted with gray ashes. Loud, nagging. They're suffocating a dude. My phone keeps buzzing. Here's body, mended yet obvious. I hear a sharp moan. Men and women in pain or joy. My phone keeps buzzing. You ran away like a little pussy. I hear a loud laughter. Those bitches won't stop laughing at me. My phone keeps buzzing. Now look at you. Please stop, she says. My phone keeps buzzing. You big fat roach. Please stop, he says. My phone keeps buzzing. Disgusting. Ah. That was an intense build-up. This guy's having a hell of a time. He's dealing with like a hundred things at once? Like Jesus Christ? Fuck off. I throw everything I can at it. Whatever's in my grasp. But it never breaks. That's why I hate it so much. I can't get rid of it. I lunge at it. I throw a punch at it. That's just my imagination. I can't move at my own will. I slip and fall on the cold floor. My phone, shampoo bottles, toothbrush, plastic cups, the pills. You're always there. You're always there to remind me that I'm a fucked up bundle of shit. Fuck you. I land a punch on it, but it doesn't break it. 
It just bounces off to the side of the bathroom. It never breaks. That's why I hate it so much. Can't get rid of it. Even after all that, the phone is still buzzing. The last shards fall from my phone. I text my client. I am unfucking available. I open my bank app and give him a refund. There's my balance. 50k. Holy shit. I have a fortune. I've got an idea. Just thinking about it makes me high. If you have 52 grand, why do you need why are you taking jobs to stay in line for 250 dollars? You already have a job. You want it that bad, you bitch? You dying to gift it to your girlfriend? Good news. You can't have it now. Channel Boy bag, white caviar leather, silver hardware. There's only one of that in Korea. And it's mine now. Have fun fighting, you two. Suck. My. Dick. Notification. My taxi is here. I'm headed to the Lot t World Tower. I'm first in line. Teller approaches and guides me inside. Bitch scans me head to toe. What are you looking? Sir, please refrain from making a scene. You're disturbing other customers. Who's that grabbing my shoulder? How dare you try to drag me out? I'm the one spending money here. I slap them and they fling right off. Is he gonna spend his entire savings out of spite? Channel boy bag. White caviar leather, silver hardware. I see it. I like it. I'm taking this. I shove a debit card up to their face. I turn around. Everyone's avoiding me. Bitches are staring at me like I'm an animal in a zoo. That son of a bitch. That fucker is filming me with her phone. I snatch it. It's a galaxy fold. I fold it backwards and slam it to the ground. Oh no, the text is backwards. They flipped the image. Yep, his face. Maybe he's looking in a mirror. Because his, his, uh, his name tag's also backwards. This guy's having a hell of a time. As I leave, I find a mirror at the entrance. Fancy boutique. Well-dressed people. The sleek black shopping bag. The white Camilla. Amelia. The perfectly packaged box. And there's me. Everything else contrasts with the shitty mess of a wolf I see in the mirror. Those bitches. They stare at me, right into my eyes. This beard. I must have looked like this back then. I was busy busting brains and I had no time to look into the mirror. But I must have looked like this back then. I must have looked like this sh I must have looked this shitty back then. This is shouting loud and clear that I'm a runaway fucking soldier. I wanna rip the entire scalp off my face. But this damn thing. I pluck at it, but it's never coming off. I hate it. I find this luxury spa on the 8th floor. What do you mean, fully booked? How much more you want? I need this shitty mess off now. Sir, we do have a room for the platinum grade treatment, but it costs... I throw a debit card at his face. I undress. The staff's... The staff's gazes are fixed on my ugly body. I can feel the unspoken questions in their eyes. Why do I have these scars? What have I been through? Don't you dare ask. Keep your mouth shut. The spa sessions begin. Every time their paw grazed my furless wounds, I could feel them flinching. Fuck. You never seen scars? Their hands go faster. With everything's done, I look in the mirror. My facial hair groomed, my messy mane and beard completely gone. Then my gra my gaze falls to my body, well trimmed, shiny red coat, and the scars, revealing a story I wish to forget in the most graphic way. 
They look even more prominent now that my f messy fur is gone. I quickly hide them with my clothes. Ha. Huh. This fucking uniform. This big fat logo printed on it. I ripped the shit out of it. I fucking hate my clothes. Men wears are on the fourth floor. Usually is the first thing I see as I'm off the escalator. No waiting this time. I gotta say, this is off to like a great start. Like obviously the the moment to moment writing is like is rocky with the translation, but it's moving quickly, and we're also like we do, it's it's doing a thing that I like to do sometimes where you're, you're you have this kind of like very strong narrator voice that is a, the first person thoughts and kind of just superlatives of the protagonist and all that, and the, and they're just like kind of lashing out and so on. He's a very interesting character who's just in a nightmare mess, and he's just making bad choices probably in general right now and it's just like watching this all happen like I, looked, I looked at the timer i'm like damn it's only been a half an hour this is it takes a while to, to get moving like this usually the furry visual novels so this is like a, a really strong start i reached out for a suit made of violet colored velvet yet before i could even lay a finger on it the seller cuts in between me and the garments this shit had definitely got his eyes on my dirty clothes uh good Good day, sir. Do you have any peace in mind? He pretends to be polite, but I know what he's thinking. The fuck you doing? I stand there like a dumb... He stands there like the dumb fuck he is. I pick out some more. Shirt with Gucci pattern, pair of Oxford shoes, and a pair of socks. XL. He disappears in the depths of the store, returning with my size. As I carried them to the changing room, the seller attempted to stop me. Sir, you can't try on that shirt. It's a policy. I push him out of the way. The way he flies out of my way. Hilarious. As I open the door, bright light flashes from the crevice. Pretty good pace for CGs, too. There's a lot of them. <clears throat> the walls and floor are draped in luxurious greenish teal velvet. Illuminated by a row of bright light and bulbs between three grand mirrors. In front of the mirror is a pink stool covered with floral tapestry. As I strip, my blotchy body is revealed. I don't know what this is supposed to feel like. I feel like a Hollywood movie star, but at the same time I feel like a very well-paid, rich prostitute. Suddenly I feel really shitty. I jump into my Gucci attire to hide them. And I buy some more. Versace Shades, Ferrag Ferrag Ferragamo Perfume, Newest iPhone, a Hermes Scarf that required an hour-long wait just to enter the boutique, and a Tiffany Ring. Yet even with my arms heavy with bags of extravagances, something is missing. I need a way to cherish this moment. A photo studio sounds like a good idea. When I finally get to the place, the photographer greets me with a courtesy. There's this huge mirror, and I look at it. That's me. Hands full of luxury shopping spree. Fancy clothes, silky fur. It's been a long time since I saw myself and thought, he looks happy. I don't feel like a lunatic anymore, which is extremely funny because he's making unhinged choices. I never felt better, or I don't remember a moment I felt better. The photo shoot starts, and I adjust my stance and smile. I realized that this life is something I would hold on to. The photos, when printed and handed to me, are the proof. There I am, looking natural in the glowing luxuries. He glows, he glows up hard. Well, I had fun. I guess I'll eat dinner now. And I have planned for that. I'll eat at the highest restaurant in Seoul. The 123 Lounge. Yeah. It's called that because it's on the 123rd floor. But hell. This building is a literal maze. I ran into an elevator, but there's no 123rd floor button. In fact, there's only four buttons. Entrance. Grand Ballroom. Lounge. Stay. What? Okay, this is pretty funny. So... Literally just a few days ago, Bird and I started playing Undefeated. You can see us, you can watch it early on Patreon if you want to. 
And it also features this exact same picture of an elevator in in the first episode. Just just really weird. I was like, am I insane or is this the exact same photo? Or is it or is it just because it looks similar because it's like it's now it's an elevator, but no, it's it's the same one. It doesn't really mean anything. I'm just like I'm patting myself on the back for noticing. While I was staring at the buttons, this one guy gets in and presses the 76th floor, Grand Ballroom. Guess that's where I'm going. It opens up to a lobby. I was expecting the sunset to beam on my eyes, but the sky turned rather gloomy. It's so foggy I can't see the nightscape properly. That sucks. I was ready to enjoy the show. There's a banner that reads, First SISF Networking Party. Wonder what that stands for. Excuse me. This cat in black business attire approached me. Her English has got that exotic accent. She must be Korean. You must be Mr. Hardway. It's an honor to welcome you. Let me lead you to your seat. We're happy you're this early. He's too eager, and I couldn't say a word. Mr. Hart what? Oh, this is getting out of hand, isn't it? My seat seems to be pretty far inside. I walk quite the distance. The ballroom's full of people, and they stare at me like I'm a celebrity or something. It's like I'm a movie star. I'm walking on a red carpet. I, I get the seat right next to the window. I just see some businessmen and businesswomen I'm supposed to know. I suppose I'm supposed to know them because they stand right up to greet me and hand me business cards. They're waiting for mine, but I got none to offer. <laughs> what do I say? Forgot to bring mine, but you know who I am, or not? Of course, Mr. Hardway. Please, send me a text when you get back. Okay. The food is served. Supposedly an appetizer. This is a crispy vegetable fry, and it's quite delightful. Been a long time since I had something like this. They compliment the food, and thank me for that. They thank me for hosting such a party. So, I threw this party. Fancy hall full of business people, delicious food, and a live band playing classics. I, no I now know this is real. I bought my way here. I worked my way here. Oh, this is all a dream. Oh, this is all a dream. Okay. I thought he was just making insane choices and that are going to be making consequence having, having consequences for the rest of the story. I think he's been unconscious since the bathroom. <laughs> I deserve this dreamy pleasure. A weasel tried to speak, but a shepherd barks with excitement, instantly muting him. So, Mr. Hardway, I hear you're looking you're looking for ways to advertise your service. Yeah. No joke, your app is a revolution to the motel industry, to the model industry. And let me be honest, I never thought you'd look so stunning. <laughs> Thank you. Seriously, we originally thought you of using some of your best models for the ad, but I think you'll do just as good. Plus, putting the face of CEO up front will leave good impression on your agency, no doubt. That is, if you keep up with your self-branding. And we have plans for that, too. We've been looking through your agency's official Instagram pages. And we figured that your audience have a very interesting patterns of behavior. Yeah, up till now I thought it was just like a series of bad decisions being made. But now I'm like, oh, they all recognize him? That, that's not correct. And I'm like, if he's throwing the party, it's like, okay, is he being mistaken for the real host? But then where is the real host? They would have shown up, right? And I'm like, oh, okay. Would you like to talk more about it? I have the proposal ready. We can definitely meet up again later if it's better for you. Thanks for the ideas, Mr. I look at his business card. Mr. Choi, but I really need to take care of some urgent business. Oh, okay. I run to the bathroom. What the fuck? There's no way I'm not getting busted. I thought this could be a start of something new. I'll just have to run away, right now. Wait. My things. I left my shopping bags and my channel on my seat. 
What in the shit should I do? I'm siding on a bench in the lobby. Sitting on the bench in the lobby. They must be thinking I'm taking the deepest shit. <laughs> okay, so let's go over this again. I pretend to call this guy. His name is Jinsu, and he asks me... Okay, maybe this is real. Mr. Hardway, did you manage to sort out your urgent matters? That leopard girl. She was on the same table. In a simple red dress. Red bottom and big dazzling necklace. She sits next to me very quietly. Just so you're aware, there's a bunch of folks inside just itching to have a chat with you. I see. And count me in too. I go by Runa. And I've heard all about your amazing works. She hands me something. A napkin. There's a phone number written on it. Today, I'm a messenger for Jessie. And that card I slipped you earlier, it's got her number on it. You see, we got a flock of gorgeous gals and pretty boys over at our club. I've got a hunch they'll set the studio on fire as fashion models. Okay, I'll look into it later. Save your breath on that, because you won't. I stare at her. Because you're not Mr. Hartway. What are you talking about? Oh, honey, let me spill the tea. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that kind of phrase. You and the other gent, the one with the red fur and those sparkly yellow eyes. You're practically twinsies, height-wise. But, sweetie, let's be real. You've got the extra touch of handsome that just takes the, that takes the cake. I feel hot on my face. Unlike you, I've never seen him flinch around other gents. Fuck this. I'm taking my stuff and leaving. I got no reason to act anymore. But she pushes me down as soon as I'm up. She's way too strong to be for being so slender. Don't you go anywhere, handsome. You've got my curious curiosity all stirred up. And you really are charming. I'd love to uncover more about you. Sorry, I gotta go before the real Mr. Hartwig arrives. No, you're not. She grabs my wrist. As you're well aware, as a party host, Mr. Hartway, a dance event will start in two minutes. And the, ver the very you hired me to be your tango partner. What? And please do not worry about Mr. Hartway. I've come to know him quite intimately. He's quite the rascal, always late by at least an hour. And bless his heart, he never quite gets around to uttering an apology. He's not coming in any minute. What about those people handing me business cards and stuff? Are you going to worry away the evening or have a little fun? I don't know a thing about Tango either. You're adorable when you're silent, you know. Just tell me your real name and shut it for the rest of the night. Call me Callum. Let's go, Callum. I can hear the band already. Why do I get the feeling that when the real Mr. Hartway shows up, he's going to kill him? <laughs> She opens the ballroom door and drags me up the stage with her big, strong, feline paws. There's already mu music playing, and people are swaying in pairs. I can feel my paws trembling, and Rune is holding mine tight. As I stand still, with no idea what I should be doing, Runa pulls my right wrist to her back, and then she puts hers on my shoulder. I can't bring myself to grab her, only the back of my paw touch her back, not my palm. She pulls my shoulder as she walks sideways. I follow her lead. We just glide side by side, back and forth for a while. Then the guy starts singing, and she pushes herself away from me. I stumble back, and right then she pulls me in so I don't fall. Her body slams against mine and I cling onto her. This time I had no choice but to grab her with my palm. Oh, God, sorry. For what, sweetie? I just... I don't know. She twirls, her hands securing mine on her waist. Sometimes it's better to be a little silly. She sweeps back, turns and glides. I stumble again and again, but I don't look awkward because she turns all my mistakes into dramatic moves. She's never not graceful. And as I start to get a hang of it, someone starts hollering out in the lobby. Soon the door bursts open. People were dead quiet when we were dancing, but now they're murmuring. 
Nope, there it is. <laughs> Runa. What the hell? What's that? And what's... What is this thing? He points at me. He surely does have red fur, yellow eyes, and a similar height to mine. But that's not me. As Runa said, I look better than that. Oh, Mr. Hartway. He looked just like you. I must have mistaken. Runa, I... What? He inspects my face. We need to talk. Runa giggles and says no word. But her face soon goes cold as my arms get tucked by two big figures. No. No. This feels just like that day. That very day. Where are they whisking the fine gentleman off to? Don't you hang out with that kind of people. Stop it. He's really scared. Can't you see? He tries to grab me, but Mr. Hartway doesn't allow. In a booming voice I'm very familiar with. Oh. Hello. Shark. Why is he familiar with the voice, I wonder? But that's interesting. That is the shark from the animation. The upsetting, upsetting animation uh, that's on the, the uh, creator's channel. Uh, where it's, it definitely seems to be suggested that they wheel off an infirm crocodile man in a wheelchair off to a place where he then gets turned into a, a, a crocodile skin bag. That seems to be the implication. No, don't you do that to him. Hey, move. No, no way. No, please don't fuck up things up, up uh, no more. It's already messy as it is. How are you even here? Why are you even alive? I look up. In the distance, Runa is running towards me with my stuff. And up in my face, I feel, find a massive shark pushing the guards away. They're nothing against him. Now his fishy hands are on my face, holding my head like a precious jewel. He stares at me like that for a while. It really is you. Are you okay? Is he... crying? Suddenly I'm forced into an uncomfortably tight hug. His hand on the back of my head, my snout pushing towards his gills. The rain is heavy. He's bleeding a lot. I can feel warm, thick liquid running down my paw. I need to hurry back to base. He won't be dead. Or not? We got Tank and everything back. I stumble. I fall flat, a face flat on the ground. But it's squishy, like a rubber. And the smell. I know that smell. Me and my friends went to that sushi place one day. We never knew the ratings of that place were so low. Fish there reeked ocean and blood. That's what I'm smelling now. A bloody big whale, eye open, staring at me. Cold and still. Those stale, black eyes full of maggot, staring into me. I push him back. I couldn't hold it anymore. My vomit is everywhere. I pull out my cell phone and run down the stairs. I open up taxi app. I need to escape this right now. That stomp must be following me. No, no. Thankfully the elevator is here. I managed to close the door before it gets in. No, not now, not never. I collapse. There's something inside me, something that shouldn't be inside me. I gag, a storm of filth pours down, but I still feel a disaster in my stomach. I smell my own self. That makes me throw up more. This can't be me. This isn't me. When the elevator opens, I spring out. I push away everything on my own. I push away everything on my way. But soon I don't have to anymore. Everything clears away. Everything avoids me. Everything runs and screams. Am I screaming? It's raining. Heavy. 
I get drenched in a second. I smell wet. I hear the stomp. No. Please, no. I run to the taxi. Go! At the back mirror, I see the shark. My eyes meet his. He runs off. Where are you going? Where are you going to do- What are you going to do now? Why did you do that to me? I need the smell off my face right now. I rummage through my jacket. I spray the Ferragamo in my, in my, onto my nose. My nose stings. It hurts. I spray it ten more times. Those neighbors. Fucking and snoring. I spray the perfume all over my wetsuit, all over my room, wishing the scent would wash away the noise. Still, I smell the rain. There's a heavy knock on the door. Gallum. No. Well, shit, this is a wild start to a story. <laughs>